you're going to have. So when you take all those things, put a star after each speaker of the thing that really hit for you. So when you go home today, you've only got like 10 things, then you have to identify which one you're going to do from there. So you got to pick your thing. I love the whole habit. He has an entire, if you have not gotten his library before, it is a worthwhile investment. It's, a, it's speaking into your head over and over again. He comes up to Michigan, does stuff for us. As a matter of fact, you better be back in the U.S. You're coming in two weeks to Michigan. Somebody tap them. <laughs> we have another event coming up there. So our next speaker, the first time when you get to date today, is one of those that makes me nervous. She has been with Young Living for about two years. In that two years, she went from just getting started playing with her oils, loving them like the rest of us, to just last month. This woman in two years has achieved royal crown to make money or to 
drive an income. I had a very good, very, very good job at IBM. I was at IBM for 15 years, was an executive, traveled three, four times a month away from my daughter. I missed many things. And I was tired at this point. I had been working on the blog. I had been working full time at IBM. And I felt like I had two jobs. I really did. Have any of you felt that way or do you feel that way right now? How many of y'all are working two jobs? Your job and then your young living passion, okay? So I was doing that. I was working my IBM job and then I had this homemade mommy thing, okay? What was this thing? And I kept telling our financial planner, I'd really like to leave my job. And he kept saying, but you don't have any other income. And, <laughs> and he said, you need to stay. You can't leave yet. And so I, but I didn't, I, I think I did not want to hear that. I wanted to hear that I could leave. And I didn't know what opportunity was going to come my way. However, I had already joined Young Living at this point. So I was getting this information slowly, like a slow trickle. And I had my kit, as Shannon said, I, was, I wasn't even using it to be honest. I had posted a few recipes, was dabbling with posting some recipes for lotions and potions, and that's all I really thought oils were for. And I had another problem. So not only was my digestion a problem, I had a problem that I thought would never go away. I thought that this was something that was part of our, our genetic makeup, that asthma was a part of our genetic makeup. And I was triggered by a lot of things, and food was one of them. If I were to drink water um, with chemicals in it, that would be a trigger for me. So all of these changes I was making in my life over 15 years were helping a lot of these things. But I started to realize that Young Living was a lot more than just for making lotions and potions. And I started to want to talk to my readers about this. Still with my job at IBM, but wanting to share. And so I did, and quickly it, it grew. And I was able to leave my job. And I thought that I was gonna be eating beans and rice and serving that to my family for many months to come, but it grew a lot more quickly than I ever imagined. So I quickly learned that even when I left my job, I quickly filled my time with Young Living. And I filled my time and I filled my time. And for a year and a half, I filled my time so full, and I was helping so many of you. There are a lot of folks in this room on my team, but I know that there are a lot of, many of you in here that I have touched, and I wanted to still continue to be able to help all of you. But I needed to find a way to do it that was authentic to me. But I didn't know how. And this past summer, I heard a story from someone who I didn't even really know that well. And I wasn't even looking for this, but it stood out to me as something so powerful that I couldn't ignore it. Do you guys know who Krista Smith is? Yeah. Yes, you want under her? She and Jason are Royal Crown Diamonds. They have 15 children. And she was interviewed by an individual and someone posted it in our diamond group and she said that she only worked five hours a week and that that's what she did from the very beginning with Young Living. And I messaged her right away and I said, um, excuse me? <laughs> and I wanted to know more. And she told me to get a program called Time Secrets. And I did this past June. And I started watching it. And I thought, you know, we all listen to personal development as Shannon really uh, honestly quoted. <coughs> buttloads of personal <laughs> development material. And I'm on my walk, all right, I'm gonna listen to this thing. And I'm walking and I had to sit down. And I started crying. I was in tears. The whole purpose of me leaving my corporate job was to have time with my daughter, to not miss anything. And while I was able to pick her up at three o'clock instead of five o'clock every day, I wasn't doing that. And even when I did, I'd pop her down on, in front of the TV and would sit down next to her. How many of y'all done this? You turn on the television, you sit down next to your child, and you turn on your phone. You don't pull out your computer, because that would be like a big commitment, right? You're really working then if you pull out your computer. But you sit there on your phone. How many of y'all done this? Raise your hand. 
Are you, if the ones who aren't raising their hands, I think you're too embarrassed to raise your hand. You probably have done this. Or if you've done it with your husband. So you get in the car, you all strap in, you're driving, there's some traffic, and you're thinking in your head, oh, woo, woo, I can get on my phone for a second. Nobody can see me, and I can take this minute in the car to look at my phone. I did this a lot. I was looking at my phone. I was checking in on my business. I felt like this was a huge and important task. I needed to do this, and I could work from anywhere, and that that was my freedom. And then one day, my husband said to me, I'm going to throw that phone out the window. <laughs> Have any of you had your spouse tell you this? Have any of you had your kids tell you this? Okay, so then when I'm listening to these, this, this personal development thing that I thought was just like any other, she set out a challenge to cut my hours back to 20 hours a week. And I thought, I don't know how I could do that. But it made sense. How she described it made sense. If you only had 10 to 20 hours a week to build your young living business, what would you focus it on? And that's the key word, focus. If you are not able to focus, then you are going to reap what you sow. And if you sow distraction into your team, what are you going to get back? Distraction. If you are going to sow busyness and craziness to your team, what are you going to get back? If you are going to sow an attitude of res total responsiveness, what are you gonna get coming at you? A lot of questions. So I learned in the past few months, and you know what? I started to learn, but you know, God was like, no, you really need to get this, okay? You really aren't getting this yet. You're not getting this enough. I was, I was cutting back a little bit here and there, but the, like these, these, these habits that come in, the little rats, he was talking about the mouse coming in the house, but always the bad habits, right, coming back to you. I really had to learn. So God said, I'm just gonna, you know, bust up your husband a little bit. Let's, let's let him, let's, let's have him bust his Achilles tendon out, which is a six month recovery time. Let's just do that. Let's do that. That, that might help you really get it. And it did. I had to take care of him, and I had to learn, and I had to cut back. And you know what? My business grew 20%. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dramatic effect. Here you take your legs down. Way down. <laughs> so my business grew 20%. Why did that happen? You guys, when you sow distraction into your team, when you sow busyness, guess what your team's going to start to see? They're going to see that you are so busy, and, and you know what? They're going to feel like they have to be the same way. And they're going to start to feel that pressure, and they're going to say, this price is too high, I don't want to do this. That's right. And guess what? When you start telling them, and it's okay, focus your time, and I'm going to teach you how. And we are going to learn together how to focus our time, and we are going to put down our phones. Because if, you know, you guys... <laughs> I think someone might be leaning on this. We are going to learn together how to do this. But if you... All right. Focus. I can focus. Don't look at your notes. Close your eyes. Be present in the moment. When I was sitting in the mastermind event, and the biggest takeaway I got was looking around me and seeing how many people scrolling on their phone. And yet they say, I'm listening. I'm listening. You're not listening. We only get 7 to 10% of the information when we're sitting in an event like this. That's a, a fact. High achieving person. Are you guys high achieving people? Are you, getting, you think you're getting 10% of what was said? Maybe. Imagine if you're looking at your phone. You're, you might be getting 2% at that point. We cannot multitask that well. 
Be present in the moment. Pay attention to your kids, to your family. Set your priorities. When we talk about changing lives, how many people in here really want to change someone's life? Remember that when you say that, we are talking about someone's real life. So be very conscious of the life you are living because they're watching you and your actions speak louder than your words. And if you're sitting in an event looking at your phone, they see that and then they start looking at their phone and then nobody hears anything. Your actions speak louder than your words. So when you come to an event, listen. Listen to the people that are up there. Focus your time. Pay attention. And when you're with your kids, listen to them. Be present with them. Don't be on your phone. Plan for the time that you're going to work on your business and work on your business and listen to what all the great people have said the past few days. When you're doing your business, I can tell you right now, 80 hours a week, 80 to 100 hours a week I was spending. 20 of them were truly productive. You really don't need to be spending all that other time. All those other things you're doing are because you are scared to do the thing you need to do, which is actually go out and meet people and invite them to your events and actually doing events. So 20 hours a week, 80% of your time, inviting, meeting, inviting, meeting, inviting, meeting, inviting, 19% of your time, the event. 1% of your time, helping your team with their problem. Okay, that's how I do it. Huge transformation. I know that you guys can have this huge transformation. Just close your eyes sometimes, put away your phone, delete your Facebook app, focus on the people and your people skills and you will go amazingly far. Thank you everyone. Adore, adore, adore. I met both of them on at Silver Club and Platinum Retreat and Gold Retreat, where all these places, and have spent a lot of time with them. And they are just incredible and make us laugh, make me smile. And I am just so pleased to announce Alana and Dustin Bookout. <laughs>